you want people that are consistent in their message, people that are consistently available for you to come back and ask more questions. Any question that you have of an opportunity that shows up or even just interest in how do you do this? How do I do that? Right. What am I looking for when I'm trying to evaluate an opportunity? If they're not willing to answer fully, if they're not willing to answer directly, then that could be a red flag for you. I'm not telling you to run from everybody in that direction, you know, that doesn't answer a question directly, but hold them accountable to it. Say, you didn't answer my question yet. So many of us in, in, in life will accept when somebody fishes around, dances around the answer and doesn't give that direct answer, come back to them and say, you didn't answer that. Tell me specifically mm -hmm. what, what's this answer? That puts people on the spot, but it also tells you whether or not they know what they're talking about and whether or not they're willing to share the information, whether it's good or bad. You want people who are willing to give you straight answers. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about how to raise private money for your real estate deals without even having to ask for money. Well, my guest today, I don't know anybody more qualified to talk about raising private money because he's already raised over $20 million in private money for different asset classes of uh, real estate. He's raised private money for multifamily. He's raised private money for self-storage. And in addition to that, also mobile home parks. Well, he's an accredited investor. He's been investing in real estate ever since 2006. I've only got three years on him. And so like many other investors, how do they start out? Well, they start out with small rental portfolios, just like my guest did. Well, he slowly built that personal portfolio and now it's valued. His personal portfolio is valued at four and a half million, uh, or it was rather. But back in 2020, he started selling off. And he wanted to swell, uh, sell off so he could move into larger commercial real estate and apartment syndications. Well, that's where he is today. He is a general partner in nine apartment syndications, which equates to over 1,750 apartments. And currently, they have under management, portfolios under management that have got a value of $270 million dollars. Do you think our guest has got some valuable information to share about raising private money and managing projects? Well, you better believe. In just a moment, you're going to meet my very special guest, Mr. Chris Linger, right after this. Well, Chris, welcome to Raising Private Money. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invite. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to have you here, Chris. Uh, we're going to dive here in just a moment into how in the world you've gone about raising so much private money, your favorite ways to raise private money, lessons and mistakes that you've learned about raising private money. But before we dive into that, we want to hear your uh, story as to how in the world you even got into this, this world of real estate investing. Oh man, the, the beginning, the beginning of, uh, getting started in investing started with, I was active duty military moved from one duty station to another. And unfortunately it was about 10 and a half years into the service before somebody mentioned to me that, uh, if you own 10 homes, by the time you retire, uh, you could live very comfortably. Um, I happened to be leaving Pensacola, Florida in 2007 couldn't sell my home during that time frame and held on to it, ended up renting that out for the next 15 years, uh, 13 years, excuse me, uh, until I sold that off. Um, that was really the kickstart. And I was like, wow, man, I'm getting paid. This guy's paying the mortgage. This is wonderful. It's not a lot extra at the end of the month, but it's something. And uh, in 2017, I met my now wife. She was also investing. 
uh, and started to intentionally invest, she had actually purchased a total of uh, 11 apartments. She had two quadplexes, a duplex and a single family. And when I met her, we were having these conversations. We realized that we were very in sync, uh, developed a relationship out of that and decided that we were going to start investing together. And uh, so we took our, our funds, pulled them together and started partnering on quadplexes. Uh, we did an eight plex at one point. And uh, at some of those spots, we, we were short on cash. And uh, I know this segues kind of into the start of your show, I guess I'll say, is, is we actually had an opportunity that popped up in the middle of trying to close on something else. We had our funds set up for this other uh, property we were purchasing. And a wholesaler came back to us and said, hey, the guy dropped out. Do you guys still want this other property? And that was really the start of us trying to raise private money going into a real estate adventure. But that's the quick story of, of our getting started. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, so what, so in that, in that story, so that's when you started raising private money. What was it about that experience that triggered that you needed to go raise private money? In other words, why didn't you go to the local bank or why didn't you sure. go to a hard money lender or any, or any kind of institutional lender? Um, you know, the, I mentioned the fact that it was a wholesaler and they kind of want to move quickly. They like to close <laughs> their deals. By the time you see it, it's like, Hey, we got 10 days, we got eight days. Right. And so it's much more favorable. They always have access, access to some hard money lenders, but we really just wanted to buy this outright. We knew like it was an extra for us. And so we went to, uh, we didn't go to um, a bank cause that would have been 30 to 60 days. We, we decided, Hey, let's talk to a couple of people. It was a fairly low um, entry point for us. And uh, we felt like we had the people who had wanted to invest with us. We just had never done investors before. And so what we ended up doing was saying, hey, we're gonna do a loan to our company, Uplex. Uh, you guys go borrow it from us. We're gonna give you a payment back in 30, 60, 90 days, whatever the time frame was. Um, and we had three people that bid in said, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to do that. And you're going to make me that kind of money that fast. Okay, cool. And um, we kind of just negotiated our own terms for how it works, you know, and again, this is a very rudimentary, very early in our stages. So we weren't quite as uh, adept to what we could do and how we could make things perform uh, right. in that neighborhood. Well, you just made a really, really important point. And that is one of the big benefits of using private money. And of course, when we're talking private money, we're talking about doing business, uh, getting loans from individuals, human beings with no middle person involved. We're not talking about any kind of an institutional money or hard money. And so one of the big benefits of using private money is that you said wholesalers, they want to close fast. And speed is, is one of the big keys and big benefits of private money. Uh, that reminds me, uh, Chris, oh, just a few weeks ago. And we were contacted by an individual that had inherited an oceanfront condominium here in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. And he lived out of state and it was going to the foreclosure sale in less than two weeks. And if I hadn't had $425,000 in private money immediately available, I closed that deal in five days. Then I would have missed out, turned right around and sold it for $628,000 after only $11,000 rehab. The point of the story is speed. Speed with using with using private money. So, um, you said that you actually had people approach you about investing before you were even approaching anybody else. Absolutely. Uh, between my wife and I, <clears throat> we had uh, at that point, I'll say we probably had about 20, 22 doors mm -hmm. uh, together, and. People had heard our story. We were talking a little bit more about it. And that's really the biggest thing is when you're, when you're starting out, when you're getting into real estate, talk about your wins to everyone and anyone that you can. They will come back and ask questions if they're interested and, and see how, the, how your story's going. Some people, they just come back and like, man, it's so hard. It's so tough. Talk about everything, but keep that kind of emotion to yourself to some extent in the fact that you want you want to bring investors, you have to be supercharged, you have to be excited, you have to be um, ready to take on the world when it comes to a real estate uh, opportunity. 
and those folks will jump on board with you. Now, I'm not telling you to lie to people when your properties are doing terrible, you sold at a loss, you lost money. Don't lie to them. But you want to talk about the positive attributes that you've had and the positive interactions that you've had with your real estate, because that's what's going to draw people in to want to work with you. If you can show that you've made profits on other things before, that you've been able to crunch the timeline faster than you expected, that's going to draw attention that people will be like, wait, you can make money for me faster than my bank, faster than the stock market. You can do different things with me. OK, let's do this. Well, I'm so glad you're bringing up the point of just being excited and talking with people about what you've got going on. You know, interestingly enough, Chris, uh, I've got 47 private lenders that are investing with us, been with us a long time. And, you know, we have new referrals coming in as well. But not one of these 47 people had ever heard of private money or private lending until I told them about it. And I do what I call I put on my teacher hat. I put on my teacher <laughs> hat, right? And I teach people what private money is. Um, not one of them had ever heard of self-directed IRAs and what that is and how they can move retirement funds that they currently have uh, over to a self-directed IRA company and either earn unlimited tax-deferred income per year or if they've got a Roth IRA, that'd be tax-free income on investing. Yep. So we really do, and it sounds like you as well, we really do lead with that that mindset of being a teacher and just sharing what's going on and letting people know, uh, you know, here on the show, we talk all the time about raising private money without ever asking for money. We don't pitch deals. I'm in the single family house space and this market is so crazy. I'm flipping just about everything, but, um, uh, you know, we don't have to ask, we teach and, you know, desperation has got a smell to it. I never talk about a deal and how they can make high rates of return safely and securely in the initial conversation, because now you sound like you're begging and you're not even trying to beg. <laughs> right. Right. Has that I'll been your experience? This. Yeah. It's the, basically it boils down to I'm buying this, whether you come with me or not, I'm just offering you an opportunity to make exactly. money. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So what have been some of your favorite ways to scale that and get the word out? Like, you know, you can visit with people one-on-one -on -one and tell them what you got going on. But, you know, for you to raise over $20 million, there's got to be a way to get, get the word out there versus just visiting with people one-on-one -on -one at a time, right? Oh, absolutely. And I do want, I'll point out the fact that we've raised over $20 million in less than four years. So it's really been a quick move for us. Uh, because as I mentioned, we did everything up until those 35 apartments in 2020. Uh, we did everything ourselves. We raised a little bit of capital for one deal, right? One deal. Uh, it was all that we ended up raising capital for along the way. And we did it as a loan for ourselves. When we switched over to the syndication model, we knew we had to talk on a broader scale. So those areas that we talked in, um, I'll say we go to events, we network with people, uh, we try to go to the real estate, local real estate events. Maybe there's a RIA or a, um, even a chamber of commerce get together for real estate people. Um, then there's uh, reaching out to folks who have webinars and, and podcasts and streams. Happy to have those conversations. Uh, but the most important thing that we've done is we educated ourselves on the different aspects of where people can make money, how they make money where the tax benefits are and we talk to an audience even if it's just in our social media we're not talking to just one person other than to say that we have like the ideal person that we look to speak to so that we have a focus and we're not just trying to talk to anybody and everybody that's out there but the the biggest thing is to get out there and talk about the message what you want to pass and how you can help those people with their situation Every investor is different. Um, there's different goals. There's different things that they want to um, avoid. And so the, the other side to it is we try to bring projects and opportunities that meet their needs. Doesn't matter what Chris and Maricela want out of Uplex. It doesn't matter what we want. It matters what the private money would like to be invested in and what kind of returns they want. That's what we go after for opportunities. And then we bring that back to the audience. Smart approach. 
what are some lessons learned? What are some costly mistakes perhaps that you've made in the, um, activity of raising private money that you've learned along the way that you don't do that, whatever that is anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kick two parts here. One is not only have we raised private money, but we have been the private money before. Uh, we're also invested in other people's opportunities. We also carry, um, I think we have seven notes right now, mortgage notes right now that we carry. And I can talk more to those as well if you're interested. But the, uh, the thing that we learned as being the note provider uh, is that, and you may not like this because your people are going to come back and go, hey, I want some of that. But uh, if, if we do a longer term, like a two or three year note, we need to add in an increase in the interest rate or an increase in some way if they decide to activate an option, an option year. Um, because we're losing out to some extent, we're losing out on reworking that money that much sooner. And so we we started to build in uh, an increased interest rate uh, for those longer term opportunities. On the borrower side or on the person offering the opportunity for private money, um, Probably the biggest lesson learned is to make sure that that we've got a higher level of control in the opportunity. Uh, sometimes we, when we first started out, we were going into other people's opportunities, helping them with asset management, raising capital, signing on the loan, but they were the main managers for the, mm -hmm. for the opportunity. And what we found is there's often times that we're a better manager than those people. I'm not saying that's true across the board, but we we definitely um, look at these opportunities different now. And we realize that even though they have some properties, they've had some success previously, we really needed to go back and look at their management of the property, not because they made money, but what did they do during the process? Because the the successes, the previous successes that you and I have had don't indicate what the success is in the future. They got those other folks that we that we partnered with had a lot of success because the market improved. We want success because we improved the position of the asset and the market improved, but it doesn't have to improve for us to make money, right? We improve the business itself. Certainly makes sense. Now, another activity and business that, that uh, you're involved in is you and your wife, Marcella, are elite business coaches where you coach and consult other business owners, entrepreneurs on how to grow their business and create passive income sources. So what does that look like? And what is an elite business coach? <laughs> so um, Grant Cardone from the 10X community, he has, uh, he has a business coach licensee program that you can you can join with a licensee. It's kind of a franchise, I guess I'll say in some ways, but it's a licensee. We get to use the 10X emblem, get to use 10X information. We can uh, at literally teach 10X courses, right? So sales and marketing are two of the main ones. We have a business bootcamp that we can we can provide that, that information to not only our investors, but clients and other business owners, our personal coaching clients. Um, the elite side is the fact that Grant actually trusts us to coach his clients. People will join for mentoring and coaching. And, you know, for the fee that it costs for, for joining that program for three, six, 12 months, Grant's not the one teaching that, that information one-on-one -on -one in person where you can ask questions and get true and personalized feedback. He does, however, have a platform called Cardone University that has his recordings of him teaching certain lessons and certain things that we provide access to that as well so that you have a resource to listen to somebody who has already done it right he's a billionaire multi-billionaire at this point um and we just we basically partnered with him to be able to teach his curriculum and utilize our personal experiences within real estate at multiple levels that Grant didn't do those levels. So he's not a, a, a niche specialized uh, instructor or mentor in that area. The other side of it is we are very comfortable with this because as I mentioned earlier, I was military. I did 26 and a half years. 
we always were part of a mentoring program, whether we were being mentored or, or providing mentorship. And my last three years of being in the military, I was actually the program director for uh, my specialty within the, within the uh, nursing community uh, for our, our facilities. So I saw it on even a bigger picture, the impact that mentorship can have and adding the coaching program, adding the certification from grant, uh, it has done, uh, I'll say numerous different uh, things that we never expected to have happen out of this have now given us better, uh, a bigger network. Uh, we're closer to his executive staff than we ever were or than most people are. And uh, it also provides us extra insight into, you know, next steps and where to take your business and how to move it along quicker from where you're at to that point of success. We can close that gap a little bit easier for people. Okay. Uh, well, now how can people learn more about that uh, particular service or coaching service? Um, I, you know what? The easiest way is to reach out to us at invest at uplex.com. And it's up-plex.com. Um, I say that it's easy, that's the easiest way to reach out to us for any of this information. But if you're looking for coaching, then definitely like specify that in your email, uh, so that we can um, uh, so that we can direct in the right direction. I just want to I want to give one avenue for people to reach out to us if they're interested in any of the information that we're talking about. They want us to go further and deeper into something. Happy to talk to you about any of these things that we talk about today. That's wonderful. Now let's talk about Upplex. Um, Upplex is uh, your company, a platform there where uh, people can invest with you and be passive investors. So uh, talk about Upplex a little bit and how that works. Absolutely. So Upplex exists to elevate others. We're there to elevate the property, the tenant, the investor, educate people, we have multiple facets to this business. It's not just about multifamily investments. We want to help you grow. And we have done, uh, as we, as you mentioned, we've done single family duplexes, quads, eight plex. We self-managed. We've had property management. Um, we've done mortgage notes. We've generated our own notes. Um, trying to think of other real estate avenues, but, but that's really the, the facet of it all is, uh, we want to bring people up. We want to elevate them. The plex part is the complexity of real estate itself, the different sizes that you can have a multiplex, a duplex, right? Um, and then uh, in business, it's a complex opportunity, whether you need marketing, sales, you want to grow your culture, your mission, you want to grow and um, scale your business. These are all different mm -hmm. facets that we're able to help with uh, within. And that's why you see the accelerated uh, biz coaching. That's the other business, the coaching side of things. We have a virtual assistant agency that we work with uh, or that we that we run in conjunction with our coaching in many ways, because business owners and entrepreneurs that are trying to grow, they just can't afford somebody in house. They can't afford a new person, but they can get wonderful help in taking care of some of the back office things so that the entrepreneur can focus on revenue generating activities. That certainly makes sense. Now let's say, uh, we have someone listening here to the show and they've never been a passive investor. Uh, they're, they're interested in investing, but they've never done that before. What are some of the really important questions a new private lender or investor should ask? before getting involved in say a syndication opportunity? Oh, I love that question, Jay. Thank you so much. The um, first questions are to ask about experience. Have you ever gone full cycle is the word that we use. And now in other words, have they bought a property and sold it? And what kind of returns have they given back to investors? Okay. Um, that would probably my, be my number one uh, question. The other would be to ask for referrals of other investors that they've worked with before and on what projects have they worked. That way, when you're talking to that investor, you can ask specifics uh, to basically vet these people. Um, the other is that uh, ask the question of who else is on the team, because a lot of times people will advertise themselves as the only general partner on the team, but there's 
five other people or 10 other people, you know, um, if there's a, if it's a big deal, it can take a lot to be able to close that. And you need a lot of team members to help. And, um, uh, let me think another question to ask those, uh, those syndicators as you're getting started is, have you ever lost an investor's money? Especially today, a lot of syndications are struggling. They're, um, uh, unable to keep up with the loan um, interest rates and how they, they they got into assets with what's called floating debt. So the interest rate changes based on the market. And a lot of projects, they weren't able to implement their business plan. This is what I was referring to earlier. They weren't able to implement their business plan to be able to stay ahead of those interest rates um, on, their, on their monthly payments. So the cash flow that they were expecting wasn't there and they didn't get the returns to their investors. Now, as long as they're still in the deal and they still have that opportunity, the bank didn't take it back or they didn't sell it at a loss, there's still an opportunity to meet the equity multipliers expected for the deal. It's just that cash flow had been changed slightly uh, or changed significantly even uh, during the operations period until they can refinance or sell that property. Yeah. Excellent advice there, um, Chris, on, you know, a new private lender or an investor, you know, looking to get started uh, as a passive investor. Um, Chris, uh, let me turn it over to you for final thoughts and comments and advice. And we definitely want to give out uh, your website and contact information again about how people can get connected with you and continue the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks, Jay. Um, one additional thing that I'll talk to, uh, um, not necessarily to ask them about, to ask a syndicator about, but really you want people that are consistent in their message, people that are consistently available for you to come back and ask more questions. If any question that you have of an opportunity that shows up or even just interest in how do you do this? How do I do that? Right. What am I looking for when I'm trying to evaluate an opportunity? If they're not willing to answer fully, if they're not willing to answer directly, then that could be a red flag for you. I'm not telling you to run from everybody in that direction, you know, that doesn't answer a question directly, but hold them accountable to it. Say, you didn't answer my question yet. So many of us in, in, in life will accept when somebody fishes around, dances around the answer and doesn't give that direct answer come back to him and say, you didn't answer that. Tell me specifically what, what's this answer that puts people on the spot, but it also tells you whether or not they know what they're talking about and whether or not they're willing to share the information, whether it's good or bad, you want people who are willing to give you straight answers. Um, yeah, the, uh, we're available for at invest at upplex.com, up-plex.com. And I really appreciated having this conversation. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me, Chris. Again, you can check out his website at up-plex.com and, uh, and get started and have a conversation. Chris, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Jay. Have a good you day. You got it. And there you have it, my friend, another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I'm so glad you decided to join us. If you happen to be listening in on one of the popular uh, podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, etc., be sure and follow me so you don't miss out. And we really appreciate you rating and reviewing us and subscribing. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and click that bell subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss so you get all the notifications and i'm looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of raising private money are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode then head over to jconnercom slash money guide that's j c o n n e r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnorcom slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.